Here in our intro to CSS app, we have the same HTML files from our intro to HTML app. I just remixed it and added CSS. If you look at the README, we have more introduction to CSS and a little bit about our new file, style.css, which contains all of our styling. In index.html, I had added a link tag saying that it's a style sheet, linking to what the style sheet location is. In our case, it's style.css. So if you show live, we have the same content as intro to HTML, but it looks a little bit nicer. We've added colors, different fronts, some uh, text spacing, stuff like that. And if you click on about, you see it also looks a little bit nicer. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And it's a separate language from HTML, but it really goes hand in hand with HTML. And it lets you create rules that affect the display of the HTML in a way that you can set up rule once and then have it apply every single time a certain type of content appears in your HTML. So when you're getting started with CSS, uh, it's usually easy to start with some very general rules. Um, and these are rules that look a lot like the HTML tags themselves. So for example, if you're building out some paragraphs and you want every paragraph to be indented in a certain way or have a certain font or a styling, you can add uh, a tag in CSS, which is just the line that has uh, the letter P, which is the same as the HTML element. And uh, within the P, you can nest a pair of curlies, and then you can give a bunch of display rules. And that primitive uh, tells the web browser that every time you see a paragraph, go ahead and apply those rules to every paragraph broadly. But then you can take it further if you want. You can just find different types of paragraphs. And that gets you into the concept of classes and selectors, which are more advanced CSS, but allows you to change the state of your app and display different things depending on, let's say, if you've moused over a button. Maybe it should look a little bit different if you're in this new state and have it pop up. So let's go to style.css and look at what we did. So I've added a different background color. I've changed the fonts. I've changed font sizes for different tags. Um, I also targeted the index page. So for index.html, I added an ID of index. And so we can choose that selector in CSS to make the text align centered only on the body tag that has an ID of index. And I did other things like I made the date italicized and bold and the status uppercase and a larger font. So that's why this looks a lot different than our original HTML page did. And that was all by using CSS and adding it to our HTML docs. So if you have something in your HTML that you want to be styled a little bit differently from the other generic objects, let's say you have a specific paragraph that you want to have a special call out inside of, uh, the way you find that over in the CSS world is in HTML, you can add additional attributes to your elements so that the CSS can pick up on them. And any attribute will do, but there's a whole bunch of conventions. And a very common convention is to use an attribute called a class. So adding a class to an HTML element uh, it's, it's kind of a confusing term. It's actually a class in like the mathematical sense. But think of it more like a tag, like an image tag. You put this kind of generic identifier on your HTML. And then over in CSS, you can use the class selector, which is very convenient to type and read. And then that allows you to put additional rules on, in this case, the paragraph example. And you could say maybe uh, every paragraph that belongs to a class called underlined, we add the underlined style. In this video, we learned about CSS and how we use it to make our website look nicer. But we want to add some behaviors to it and have it do cool stuff, and we need JavaScript for that. And we're going to learn about that in the next video.